Uh, so my name is Naoki Yamamoto. Uh, currently, I'm working at the Marama University's uh, Graduate School of Turkic Studies. Uh, I have been in Istanbul for five years. And my research subject is actually the Ottoman Tasawwuf, especially history of the Ottoman Tasawwuf uh, in the 17th century and 18th century. Uh, but uh, from outside of my academic uh, career, and actually it's part of my academic career, but I am also studying about the traditional like Japanese cultures, and not only about like studying, you know, I'm trying to engage with you know, the traditional Japanese cultures, and one of, uh, one of my projects, uh, which is really close to my heart, uh, is the, this practicing the tea ceremony, the like Japanese tea ceremony. So the, in English it's called like a traditions, and in Japanese we, uh, we call it like a dento, and in Turkish we call it like a gelenek. Uh, for example, like you know, uh, if we say like traditional cultures, in Turkish we say the gelenek serikirtul, and in Japanese we call it like a dento bunka. And I'm not sure where this you know the Japanese word this dento like, comes from. It may be like it, it maybe it's the like coin after the modernization, uh, but then uh, means like a transmitting, and the to. Actually, dento means like something which is transmitted uh, from like a previous generation. And in English words, like a tradition is also have the same meaning. And I, I, I don't know what the, uh, what the meaning of like a gelenek uh, means like in Turkish. Like. Uh, it, it means like maybe like the old way, you know, the, this terminology is make, uh, created like after the modernization. Like, you know. Because uh, this tr I, s I don't know what the opposition tradition means. Like maybe the opposition tradition means like a modernity. But in a modern, modern society, like we are more encouraged to like, create like new things. For example, like if people are eager to say that I have invented something or I made something or I am the first one who uh, who present this. Like if you uh, if you participate like an academic workshop or I don't know some like a techno festivals and I'm sure like every scientist and academician has said that like you have to prove that you were the first one uh, who invented and you were the first one who decipher the mystery of something. But tradition is a, a tradition, or that any other like a cultures or like a sports or the sciences uh, which are rooted in tradition, trying to prove the completely like opposite things. Uh, because tradition means uh, something which is inherited or something transmitted uh, from like someone. So it means like uh, you have to prove that you are the last one uh, who who cherish that culture. So you or you, uh, or the, you are not the only one who are engaged in these cultures. Uh, you are just like a point of the whole history of a certain like art or the sports. So tr uh, so in this sense, like in this tradition, uh, especially traditional cultures, they are trying to prove that you are nothing. But in the modern sciences or the modern cultures, that you are, uh, you have to pr pr prove that you uh, that you are something. Like you have the meaning. So in this sense, like this tradition and the mod uh, and the modernity, or traditional cultures and like modern cultures, it's like a yin yang theory, which which is something which never found uh, like a shared, like a common ground is uh, something. So. Uh, now we are living in the 21st century uh, in a postmodern society, so uh, it's it's my, uh, it's a little bit like a challenging, you know, pre to uh, preserve uh, what the uh, what is the like values of the traditional culture is. So as I said, like you know, let's say, so in the modern, if you engage in modern sciences or modern cultures or modern sport, you have to prove that you are number one. Uh, and also you have to prove that you were the first one. But if you engage in traditional cultures or traditional sports or like education, uh, the first thing that you have, uh, you have to know that actually that you are the nothings. And also like uh, if you engage in like a modern, edu uh, like modern education, like uh, I'm sure, well I'm sure, but that if you, uh, if you study in universities or if you're in high school, like you, you can read the syllabus like that before, you, before you choose uh, the class. And if you read the syllabus, so syllabus is also like a really modern invention. Like, uh, the title of the class, uh, the lecture is also written, and uh, you will read the uh, like abstract of the class. And with all that, uh, usually the professor writes what is the purpose of the class, or what, uh, or what, uh, or aim of you know the lectures, or what you can learn uh, from the lectures. But uh, I have been always thinking that. Uh, 
and sometimes if you, uh, something like some syllabus like explain so detail about like the aims and uh, the purpose and uh, the fruits of the lectures then I have been thinking that if there's so much detail is written already in the syllabus why should we choose or why should we study the lecture already because the syllabus is enough uh, like uh, I hope I can make myself clear but uh, <clears throat> but if you engage in tradi uh, traditional like a culture or sports you mostly like, even myself like I, I ask my like teacher like what is the purpose of this traditional culture so what the traditional culture like teach us or what kind of human that we can be if we engage in the cultures but and my master in tea ceremony says that actually there isn't a clear answer because because reaching to the goal is actually not the aim of the old tea ceremonies or traditional cultures. But if you engage like a university, for example, university students always ask like professor, like, can we can we gain money uh, if we learn this disciplines, or can we find a job if we learn this discipline? They they always want to know the fruit and also know the answers. But if you live in this in, in this life, or yeah, if you live in a society, actually, that most of like 99.99% 90, of the what we encounter is without the answers. And wh what the traditional like uh, uh, traditional educations like teach us that we have to deal with something which doesn't have any answers or something which doesn't have any meaning of it, and <coughs> and in tea ceremony like to some extent like it, it's some it has some like a benefit like you can learn how to show respect to the people or you have to learn uh, how is the importance of like patience or you have to know how to uh, find like a peaceful heart in the heart but. This is not only this is not like limited in a tea ceremony. Like you can uh, you can also learn the, those kind of things from the YouTube or the text or any other culture itself. So, but but what, is, what is the important thing is that, uh, that what is important about traditional culture is that you, that you traditional education made you to build like intellectual muscles uh, that you don't have so that you don't have to judge something like uh, as soon as possible because. Uh, if you look, uh, if you watch like a tick, uh, uh, not on YouTube, but TikTok is the worst example. Like you know, you have to prove something within 15 seconds. Like you have to give your own idea in 15 seconds. You have to prove your own logic in 15 seconds. You have to show something which is funny or entertaining like 50 seconds. But like, uh, but not only tea ceremony or in the sword play or uh, like in wrestling. Like you know, you, you cannot prove anything in 15 seconds. Like usually it takes like one year or two. Like even the match itself is like 30 minutes or something one one hour. And, and education itself, for example, I I am still a student of the st student of tea ceremony, but it takes five years to reach like a second level. It took five years. Like if it is more than university, I, I uh, I'm already graduated from the school, and, and still, and and I have been studying uh, this art for five years, but yet. I don't have an answer for this uh, for this art, like why I'm studying for it. But this is what actually the reality of this life is. Like, uh, if you like, if you go to the election, if you go to the university, or if you go to any other things, like you, the, the people always trying to show that that what kind of like a fancy person you can become, like if you become one of us. But the world is so like vague, or and also the world is full with ambiguity, and the traditional art is actually the tr uh, trying to teach the beauty of this ambiguity. That the world is not composed from like just one white and black, and 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 to answer to your question, that what kind of person that we can become, that if we engage in traditional art, you can gain like a intellectual strength to deal with this ambiguity of this world. So this symbolic meaning is like you know how you can how the, that we can learn how to deal with ambiguity. So, but uh, the tea ceremony itself it symbolizes the harmony, uh, the harmony of the like the, uh, the every opposing uh, like element. For example, the, the in Istanbul, I am also organizing the like, tea ceremony for the students, but the. Uh, there is a symbolic meaning of the tea use and tales and also the human being. Like tea use and tales is actually the symbol of the macrocosmos, and the, and the human being is a microcosmos. So when you are cl cleaning the macrocosmos, uh, the tea use and tales, actually you uh, that you are engaging 
symbolically, of course, the symbolically with, with the macrocosmos. And through engaging with the macrocosmos, actually you are, you are also purifying the Nagi yourself. Mm. And, <coughs> and before starting the tea ceremony, like you, uh, and also this training of the tea ceremony are uh, usually conducted uh, between like a master and also like a disciple. And, and before, uh, before the training, like uh, the disciple and the master will bow each other uh, and say like Yoroshiko onegaishimasu. It means like and it's, thank you very much for giving me such a beautiful opportunities. But what is the important message from this is that not only from the disciple to the master, but also the master should show the gratitude to the disciple. Because there is no DT ceremony like without a master, uh, without a master but also there is no like, training without the students. So it, it means like master can only become the master with the students, and the students become the students can be uh, students can be like students like like only with like with the masters, and and if I explain this like it sounds like a tautology like of course, of course like students have the uh, teachers but uh, if you uh, if you uh, if you watch like um, like a modern uh, like a modern Hollywood movies or like a modern like a video game that you can see the cre uh, the create distinct distinction between like a tradition, uh, traditional art and also like modern inventions. For example, I am, I am the big fan of Star Wars. Like in, uh, I, I, I have been watching the Star Wars maybe like since like 10 years old or something. Uh, and there was like a new series that came up. I was a huge fan of the, like, uh, the previous series, like from episode one to previous six. Because the, uh, it actually it was like a modern, a modern like a sci-fi like movie. But it was also trying to like, depict the beauty of the relationship between master and disciple. And, he, and how it's difficult uh, to uh, educate, or well, not educate, like to guide a disciple, uh, guide like a disciple uh, to like the right path. So that uh, uh, in this uh, in this movie, like a Star Wars, uh, there is a character called like a Jedi, and and the Je and, and 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 the Jedi is like a heroic, heroic, like a like a swordsman uh, who used like a mysteri mysterious like a power called like a force. But you can, uh, but it is impossible for the for uh, the character to learn how to use like a force without a master. So they always like a masters, and and also there was like a like a part of one like a disciple. Uh, but I have watched the new series from episode seven, episode nine, and I was really shocked uh, because there was a protagonist called Ray, and and in episode eight, this Ray uh, visited like a planet. Uh, to see like a legendary Jedi called like Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker was a protagonist, protagonist in previous series uh, to study how to use the horse. And as one of uh, <coughs> and was one, as like one of the audience, like I was expecting like this is the time that you know this legendary like Luke Skywalker is finally teach teach like a Jedi training to the protagonist so that protagonist can also become like a true Jedi. But in the episode eight, in the end, he didn't te teach anything. Like he was just like a loser who confined himself in in like a cave, uh, and I thought like Ray lost like opportunity to study uh, like a Jedi training, but in but in the last scene of episode eight, like Ray suddenly become like one of the strongest Jedi, and in, in history of the Star Wars. And I want to ask like how come, I and mean, how is that possible without a master? Uh, if you watch like Hollywood movies, like actually you can see a lot of like Asian or Oriental like element, like a master and disciple and training and spiritual power, but they never understand the importance of education, and they never understand the importance of digesting the ex experiences of trying to reach the truth. Like they believe that everything is like identity politics. Like, uh, like either if you have like strong identity, that like if you know how to define yourself, like you, that you are the male, or you are the female, or you are politicians, or you are academicians, uh, or like, or if you can define yourself, that you are the like best person in this universe, then you can become like a best person in the universe. But the world is not like that. And also, that you will, ne you can never identify yourself because the others will identify you. And uh, this is what they don't purpose of the traditional education like it is. Like in the tea ceremony, as I said, the master cannot become the master without the students. And students cannot become the students like without, without, without the masters. Uh, 
most of the Japanese think that the, when you see some something or like some culture which is called like traditions or, or like a dental, they think that this is something which is like backward or which is something which has no meaning in the modern society. And now, and now I have attended this program and you know, wearing this kimono, like traditional clothes. But I'm sure that most, of, maybe like more than 80% of the uh, of the Japanese citizen, uh, they don't know how to wear kimono anymore. And even this, uh, this traditional Japanese tea ceremony, odd. So it's still now, uh, now less and less uh, should, uh, students are engaging like this art. So uh, as the, uh, in, in general. To speak, uh, I think the Japanese traditional culture is also now in, uh, it's like an danger uh, situation. But there are also some, but we also must not forget that uh, in Japan, there are like many people who don't, who don't, uh, who don't even know about the meaning of tradition, uh, traditional Japanese, uh, Japanese culture is. But also there are, there are some like Japanese like who are trying to like preserve uh, the values of our traditional cultures, uh, and who try, and also who try to put a new creativity in it, and also Turkish. For example, now I am now working in Turkey, but Turkey is also the same. Like even in Istanbul, like if you go to a certain district, you might think that this is just like a uh, just like a cop the copy of like I don't know Washington D.C. or London or something. But if you go to like a certain district, then you can see there are some like people who uh, who are very sincere to their tradition and who try to preserve the tradition, and who try to teach the tradition to their own students. So in the end, like, you, know, uh, you, you cannot judge one society from one perspective. Like, as I said, the, one, of the beauty of tradition, uh, one of the beauty of engaging with traditional art is that you, have, that you can see the ambiguity of this world. So Japanese society also has lots of ambiguities. Like, you, know, you, cannot, you, you cannot judge the Japanese uh, by, uh, in, uh, with like, a clear answers. Like, they are, uh, like, we cannot say that 100% of Japanese citizens are modernist. And also in, same, in the same way, like vice versa. Like, they, you cannot say that you know, Japanese are 100% uh, of Japanese, uh, Japanese citizens are preserving tradition. And Turkish society is also the same. Like, maybe on the surface, the Turkish society looks really modern and really secular. Uh, but uh, there are also, uh, there are also many uh, like uh, yeah, I saw many like young uh, younger generation who are engaging uh, this tradition art and culture as well. So what is important is that we must not see the society from outside, but we have to like enter society and you have to find like individual, like not not from now, uh, not from the uh, like something. Which like, we don't have. What I want to say is that we we, uh, we should not judge one society from what, from something you saw in the YouTube or the TikTok. Like you have to know the individual, and, and also you have to be with that individual, and uh, uh, and you have to understand what exactly he or she is like doing. Yeah, I saw like now many people saying that what what is their the. the uh, um, characteristic of this generation Z, or they say that it's really difficult to understand like generation Z, and they said that how how they are uh, how the the people who uh, how I say generation that are like a cor uh, like a corrupted, or they are uh, or they are so away from the Christian values. But I remember like when I was a teenager, like my parents also said that you know my generation is so difficult to understand. And I remember my grandfather and my grandmother, they also said that you know, it's so difficult to understand my parents. So actually there is no such, uh, there is no, actually this, there is no such originality in generations that and also the parents and also the, uh, my generation. Like this is how the, uh, how the human natures are. Like the, as the human being, it's difficult to understand the others. And that's it. Do you think they will show respect to real traditional cultures when these older generations are mocking the younger generation. Of course not. I mean, they are, uh, they are not like simple like monkeys or like mouses. Like you, know, you cannot like guide them like uh, with like beating them with with, with whippers. Like like if you really want to preserve like traditional culture, first you have to show respect to the younger generation. And and this not showing respect is not just like in spoiling them. Like you have to prove that 
what kind of person you can be if you engage in traditional education. If you use, as long as you use like, such kind of like toxic, like strong terminology, then you are just proving that this tradition, traditional education is nothing. Uh, to your question, like what I can see from like a generation that actually, like when you seeing the new, new generation, actually you are seeing uh, what you are actually like doing. So the much proper generation, uh, much uh, proper question that we have to encounter is that when you see others, actually when you you are seeing yourself, and as like someone who are engaging like traditional art, like uh, what we should do is like we have to critically examine ourselves. That are we really engaging with the others like in the proper manner, in proper behavior, and also are we really sincere to our own like a tradition? Because uh, you have to check the other masters. Like, do you think that they are also like mocking the others, or they're just beating the children with the whips? And I'm not sure. Uh, and I'm sure they. Uh, I'm sure they won't. Because I define. So usually in, in academically, the tradition is something defined that which is inherited or is transmitted from the older generation. But uh, I also put the more like spiritual meaning tradition. Like tradition is the like gift. From the older generation. In Turkish, in Turkish, well, I don't use the word like hediye, I use the word like emanet. Emanet means like something which is entrusted from the older generation. Like this is the gift which is given by the older generation without any uh, like expectation. Like, and if you have this like emanet, then you have to protect this emanet. Like you cannot just break this emanet and just destroy it to the, to the younger generation. You have to keep this emanet like clean. And you have to, you have to polish that like in in the daily lives, and you have to decorate this emanet so that the younger generation can see this emanet has like a value in it. So we have to think carefully that what we are like actually doing, like us, like older generations.